gut health issues could impact 70 to 80 percent of our health problems so what is gut health our gut health is equivalent to the health of the billions of microbiome that thrive on the lining of our intestines small and large intestine and these microbiome are various different species of viruses bacteria and parasites the proportion of these microbiome to human cells is 10 to 100 10 human cells to 100 of microbiome. These microbiome are friends with benefit. They use our body as a cozy house to live in and they provide lots of different functions to restore our physical and mental health. Now, when you have a good healthy gut microbiome, you're able to digest food well, you're in a good physical, mental state as well as your immune system is functioning well. And with lots of our current health issues in our modern society, such as allergies and tolerances, food sensitivities, mental health issues, the core factor behind that is gut microbiome imbalances. Now, what causes the gut microbiome imbalance? The first seeding and imprint of the gut microbiome comes through the natural birth, through the birthing canal from the mother, seeded to the uh, baby's skin and activates the immune system. So if a child has missed the natural birth and it has come through C-section, that first impression and first seeding of the gut, healthy gut microbiome is missed. Then secondly, you can get it through breastfeeding, which could be crucial to again transfer that microbiome from the mother to baby. Thereafter, what else disturbs our gut microbiome is antibiotics. Now each time you've got an infection and doctor gives you antibiotics, most of these antibiotics are broad spectrum antibiotics, which means they would address and kill that particular pathogen, but also will disrupt a lot of healthy microbiome and bacteria in the gut. So many times after taking a course of antibiotics, the whole gut microbiome and the ecosystem is hugely disrupted, leading to allergies, intolerances, and lots of other complications. Last but not the least is our diet and our lifestyle. So avoiding antibiotics and supporting your health with healthy diet. Now, when we talk about diet, what you eat is life and death for these microbiome. So if you're eating a diet, which is a lot of packed processed food, uh, heavy in carbs and sugars, you're feeding the unhealthy microbiome and they are thriving in your gut. If you switch to a healthy uh, diet where you're eating lots of fiber, vegetables, greens, uh, plant-based um, nutrition in terms of uh, veggies and fruits, you are feeding the healthy microbiome. And literally it takes a week to sort of switch this whole ecosystem so if you stop eating unhealthy food, you will starve the bad bacteria. And if you start eating a lot of fiber, you are basically feeding the good microbiome to thrive, which is excellent news. Besides that, you could take probiotics uh, if you have taken antibiotics to help restore that healthy microbiome. And even better is prebiotics, which is all the fiber, fermented food, which is basically the food for the gut microbiome. Now our gut microbiome has got lots of different functions. Our gut produces serotonin and GABA. 80 to 90% of our serotonin is produced in the gut. Serotonin is your happy hormone. GABA is the hormone which is anxiety inhibiting hormone. So once your gut produces these happy hormones, they get activated and synthesized by the different species of microbiome in the gut. So in case your microbiome is disrupted, these serotonin and GABA cannot be synthesized and activated, which the brain receptors would be able to use. So you feel calm uh, and relaxed. So in that case, a lot of anxiety, depression, hyperactivity, some people who are quite hypersensitive to stress, that all comes from gut microbiome when these different species are missing or under functioning that should be activating serotonin, GABA and happy hormones. If somebody has got higher threshold for pain versus very low threshold of pain, that again comes from your gut profile. 
So in our modern society, a lot of mental health issues are coming from our gut because of overuse of antibiotics. And when we talk about antibiotics, it's not only taking antibiotics prescribed by the doctor, 70% of antibiotics are prescribed to animals. So when you're eating a lot of meat and um, poultry, you're getting the antibiotics from your diet and therefore eating uh, organic uh, meat and poultry would be an easier way to avoid those antibiotics. So what can we do to support all these issues? Well, change of lifestyle, healthy eating, prebiotics is a way. Besides that, many a times you need to address all the underlying causative factors and that's where body talk treatments come in. Body talk treatments use work with your body's innate wisdom to identify where the blockages are, what are those causative factors, which could be emotional traumas, because our psychology and our physiology is intertwined. They are not two separate things. So addressing the emotional stress, addressing the uh, allergies, intolerances, it could be leaky gut, it could be toxins, heavy metals. So running treatments to optimize your immune system as well as running treatment to address the emotional psychological factors and rebooting the pH level which is the acid alkaline balance uh, of the gut microbiome so these healthy bacteria can thrive is the way body talk treatment would work to support your gut health by listening to your body's unique story identifying all those causative factors and supporting the body so it can heal and repair itself. I had a client who took a course of antibiotics and went into a massive depression. With body talk treatment, we addressed all the underlying positive factors and the depression literally lifted after one treatment. So with mental health, gut health is intertwined and you can do a lot as well as look into body talk treatments if you are sort of uh, going through one of these issues.